Welcome back to another tutorial of PyQGIS in the GIS World Academy with Mohammed. Today we will talk about our first PyQGIS mini project. So in this tutorial we will answer how we can analyze the distribution of the kindergarten and the residential building using a geodata and how we can check whether the number of kindergartens is sufficient to serve the nearby residential building. If you are excited, let's get started! In this PyQGIS project, we aim to analyze the distribution of kindergartens and residential buildings using a geodata. Okay, which type of geodata I mean? So here is the data that we have already worked in our previous PyQGIS tutorials. And if you just seen this video, I fully recommend you to look at the previous videos. And also if you want to download this data and you have not downloaded it from anywhere else. So we have already explained it completely in our, I think, third QGIS video. We have a playlist as a QGIS. In the third video, you will see how we can download data from OSM, the open data. Okay, then... The next part, the objective is to determine whether the number of the kindergartens is sufficient to serve the nearby residential building. So how we can do that? So the project involves selecting kindergarten buildings based on their building type attribute. So I have a building layer. I want to find the kindergarten inside the building column. Creating a 400 meter buffer around them so I select the kindergartens, I will make a 400 meter buffer around it. Then identify residential buildings that are both within and outside the buffer. So uh, we should know that which building is inside the buffer and outside the buffer. And finally, assessing if the existing number of the kindergarten meets the predefined threshold. Okay, then again, so here is my data, here is my buildings. If you see, I have a one column as a building. So here we have a different type of attributes. So if we go down, definitely we will find our kindergarten, okay? So first of all, I need, you have some geometries inside these geometries, you will find one feature like kindergarten and if your data doesn't have kindergarten it doesn't matter just select one of the randomly and say that this is my kindergarten and it's done okay but for this study area so it will, it will be really nice if you can find it with a feature attribute then you will create a buffer then you will select the building outside the buffer inside the buffer then you will uh, determine which of them it is outside, inside. And after that, you will analyze, okay, how many residential buildings remain outside the buffer. Now, if it is more than, I don't care, some numbers, then we can say that, okay, we need to have one kindergarten here. So it is a very a small project, but definitely practical. Okay, now what I have already expect from you. First of all, select kindergarten buildings. In this part, I expect that you create a function named select underlying kindergartens that takes a QGIS layer, okay, vector layer, we have already talked about it, as an input and returns a new layer containing only kindergarten buildings based on the building column. Then create a 400 meter buffer around the kindergartens, create a function like for example, create a buffer, create underlying buffer that takes a QGIS layer, buffer distance, and select the features as input and returns the buffer geometry. Then I need select residential building outside the buffer. Again, I need a function, for example, like uh, select residential outside buffer that takes a QGIS layer, residential type, and the buffer geometry as the input, then returns a new layer with selected residential building outside the buffer. Then analyze kindergarten distribu 
distribution. So again, you will have one function as a analyze kindergarten distributions. So you will take one QGIS layer, threshold, and you will return whether the number of the kindergartens is sufficient or not, something like this. And the last step is very important for me. So we are writing a clean script. So for me, it's very important. You will run or you should run. You should write a runner part. So in this runner part, again, it will be a function. It should take a layer name, buffer distance, residential type, and threshold as an input. Then it will you will should run your uh, run your script and everything should be fine. And all in all, we have already discussed everything in our PyViewJS tutorial plus our Python tutorial. Python tutorial are very important because we have already had uh, many, many projects there. So I would really recommend you, if you have not watched them, take a look at them. It'd be really helpful because I have already talked about the modular programming. Also, you can use it here. In this tutorial okay uh, i don't want to waste the time have fun with this small mini project so please do that and we will see each other next time in the answer of this mini project okay like all of other videos first of all thanks for your time and attention if you want to support us don't forget to like our video subscribe our channel recommend it to your friends and see you soon